Hello and welcome. I'm Annette Reeder from the biblicalnutritionist.com and today we're going to talk about the top 11 herbs for fertility. Now this is not just for women, this is for men and for women and it's important for us to understand that we actually have natural healing properties in many of the plants that God has given us. Herbs used to be the first go-to centuries ago for healing. Well then the pharmaceutical industry came in and learned that they can isolate and then produce identical in the lab. Well now we're back to the days of just give me an herb so I can create that natural healing effect. So we're going to talk about these 11 herbs for fertility for both men and women. Well, thank you for letting me share with you God's recipe for excellent health, which always includes the top three ingredients, confident in the kitchen, confident with your health. That's what we're talking about today. And most importantly, confident in understanding how much God loves you. Well, I am here at the Baker Seed Company. They're known as rareseeds.com. I'm here at their village. They have a quaint, just pioneer village. It's a great place to come visit. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere, but it is so worth the trip in Mansfield, Missouri. So let's go investigate the top 11 herbs for fertility. As we talk about the top 11 herbs for fertility and infertility, it's helpful to understand what are the causes of infertility. So I have the top 10 causes of infertility. I'm going to list them below in the show notes. So you can just go through and look through each one of the top 10. There are many reasons for infertility from anything from a stress, from abuse of different chemicals, and even from environmental toxins, to the food that we're eating, and even to what we believe about what is truth about God's word. It can even be related to your relationship with your husband or your wife that can be the cause of infertility. It all adds up as a toxic load on your body. And when that toxic load hits a point, your body says, we cannot handle making a child when you are so toxic. So what I teach in the infertility classes as I travel around the country is that first we must address the toxic load. We need to lessen that. We need to help our body to heal. Then as we're using the herbs and the fertility is starting to be resolved, by the time we conceive and have a baby, we have so much energy, so much vitality, so much desire to just live vibrantly that having a baby is going to be the blessing of what you're doing versus just working predominantly fo you know like spiral focus just on fertility no let's look at your overall healing and as we look at your overall healing we can address the fertility issue fertility just is not a one issue problem it's a whole system problem. So we need to bring healing to the entire system, which includes getting rid of toxic products, toxic thoughts, toxic food, and bringing in real wholesome healing foods. Let's talk about the 11 herbs for fertility. So when we use herbs versus conventional treatments or conventional uh, drug therapies, herbs are more adaptogenic. And so what that means is they bring us back into balance where a drug is going to cause an effect. It's a cause and effect solution, yet it's going, it can interfere or it can enhance. Whereas herbs are, if someone is high in estrogen brings them down, if someone is low in estrogen brings them up, they're adaptogenic, God created them. So there is great benefit in using herbs before going to conventional treatments. I also suggest try the herbs that I'm going to suggest and then see the healing that you're getting. But this is not an overnight check off the box. I took some ashwagandha and I'm healed. No, this is a process towards healing. And again, like I said before, we need to create the healing process before we even think about having a child. So give this a minimum three months, then six months and preferably one year. A truly healthy child is born to a truly healthy body. So we need to address the health of the man and the woman, and then we will have better, uh, better chances of having a healthy baby. So when you choose uh, regular herb treatments versus conventional treatments, herbal treatments, you wanna start off with small doses and they're plant-based. So there are chances that you could have a sensitivity to a plant or an allergy to a plant. That, that can be very common. That's part of the healing process. So there may be some herbs that I suggest, you're like, nope, can't do that one. That's okay. God has many options for us. It's not just one plant that does everything. We're not in the desert with manna and quail. We have this whole farm is loaded with different herbs that we can choose.
So let me share with you the top 11 herbs for fertility. Number one is chamomile. Chamomile is an excellent because it helps to balance the hormone levels, also helps to bring a calmness. And especially at night, to drink chamomile tea is just great for bringing on sleep, a restful sleep, and also helps you to have better dreams. So chamomile, although we see it as a calming effect, it also brings into balance cortisol and your hormones. So that in itself is going to lend itself to having a better opportunity for conception. Number two is cordyceps mushrooms. You may say, Annette, we're talking herbs, not mushrooms. Well, any part of a food or part of a plant, I should say, that lends itself to a healing effect can be considered an herb. So cordyceps mushrooms are actually, um, centuries ago, the kings would make sure the king and all his concubines were taking cordyceps mushrooms because it made both parts, both parties involved have more vitality and therefore they were able to conceive more babies. So concubines were required to have it and the king would take it and it was for uh, performance. So not only can we be infertile because of a hormonal imbalance, we can be infertile just because of an inability to perform. Number three is ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is one of the best adaptogenic or most well-known adaptogenic herbs. And it is still, it's been used for centuries. It can still be used today in, for many purposes. Number one that it does is it balances cortisol. And all of our hormones are reflected in the balance of cortisol. It's an anti-stress, it's a calming. And even when we're going through infertility, it, it can just cause additional stress. And the ashwagandha is going to help calm that stress. And it's like, okay, Lord, I know you have this. Teach me how to heal my body. Teach me what foods are good and help me to know what herbs to add in. Just allowing that calming effect to take over. You're going to say, it's much easier to say, Lord, I know you have this. So ashwagandha is great for that. It's also good um, for relaxing. So calming and relaxing besides even balancing the cortisol. We have to balance the cortisol to get the estrogen levels back in balance. Number four is rhodiola. This is so important for blood circulation for both men and for women. And in order to um, have the hormones be at their best, to have the best performance for conception, we have to have good blood circulation. And without blood, good blood circulation, you're going to have lots of issues beyond infertility. You can have varicose veins, you can have tired muscles, you can be tired all day without that blood circulation. So this is very important for everyone to consider being on the herb rhodiola. And number five is red clover. Red clover is specifically important for women who are in more menopausal years or women who are in PMS issues. If you're in PMS issues, even from the young age of 13 all the way up to the age of 53, that is a, a hormonal imbalance sy symptom. And so we need to correct the symptom before considering putting someone on birth control pills at a young age or having trouble conceiving. So red clover actually benefits the balancing of the progesterone and the estrogen. Number six is lemon balm. Lemon balm is so easy to grow in your garden, add it to your tea, steep it in water, let that be a drink. You can dehydrate it and add it to teas in the winter when you're not able to grow it. Again, I'm going to mention the calming and relaxing effect because when hormones are out of balance, that's when we have mood swings, that's when we have crying fits, that's when we have tension building up because we're out of balance. So every herb that we can add to our diet to bring that calming and relaxing then our body is able to be more efficient in balancing the hormones. So when hormones are out of balance, we have that crazy out of this world attitude. So every herb that brings us back into balance with the calming and relaxing is a symptom. So being stressed is a symptom. The calming and relaxing is also a symptom, but it's a symptom of hormones imbalance. So anytime I have different herbs for that effect, then we benefit. Number seven is fenogreek. Now fenogreek, so conception for fertility is the act of that is so important. So fenogreek helps with lubrication, it helps with libido, and it helps with just that connection of satisfaction. And because when, people, when, when husbands and wives are dealing with infertility, 
that stress is so difficult. It's like, oh, it's time, we must conceive today. Well, that can really interfere with performance. And so fenogreek helps with the desire, it helps with the lubrication, and it helps with the satisfaction. And without lubrication, sperm are not able to be viable. Without lubrication, there's not able to have that conception moment. And the lubrication is more is not only about pleasure, but it's about the whole process of conception. Number eight is maca. Maca is like the king and queen of conception. So it's the one of the best between ashwagandha, maca, shatavari, and beetroots. Those are the top four and maca is definitely the top one. And I'm gonna put links to these herbs down below. Some will get, be able to get here and you can grow yourself. Some you can buy the extracts and get that benefit as well. So I'll put links to these vendors that have these products available for you because not only do we need the herbs, but we need to know that we're getting them from a source that's not gonna be contaminated with heavy metals, that's not gonna be processed in another country. So whatever country you live in, you wanna be able to get the products in a pure for source from your country. So maca promotes energy, stamina, and endurance, and has 18 amino acids. And every cell, both your making of a baby, has to have good amounts of amino acids to build that baby. And so the other benefit is, so maca is for men and for women, and it also protects against many reproductive system cancers. So not only are we balancing into a fertility state, but we're protecting against cancer at the same time. Maca is the number one herb to add in. Number nine is for women specifically, and it's called Shadavari. Shadavari, it balances estrogen. So when we have PMS or PCOS, it's too high. When we have menopause, it's too low. Shadavari brings them back into balance. And that's where our happy state is, and that's where conception is able to take place. Number 10 is both for men and for women, and it's beetroots. So you can definitely grow beets and just eat them yourself. It's again for blood circulation. So without good blood circulation, you're not able to have the performance and therefore the conception. And so much more than just balancing estrogen and progesterone, we also have to have the blood flow for this to take place. And so this is for both men and for women. Number 11 is for the man, and it's American ginseng and specifically American ginseng. There's different types of ginseng, but this is the American, and it helps with circulation and for blood flow. Again, but this one is more specifically geared towards the men and their performance. So fertility is about getting everything in balance, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, and with estrogen, you have the family of estrogen. Women need testosterone also, not just men, men also have estrogen they need that to be balanced as well so we need everything brought back in balance but most importantly we need to understand that god has a purpose for for reproduction it was his creation to begin with and when you have a husband and a wife and they know how to love and respect each other then it's it's a better process for the conception because that baby deserves a husband that is loving to his wife and a wife that is respectful to her husband so that child can grow up in a safe, loving atmosphere. So not only do we address the physical, we address the spiritual, the way God designed it, and we get the blessing of having the baby. And so I haven't really talked about prayer in this video. This has been all about herbs, but that is always one of the key elements to fertility. Well, thanks for letting me share this with you and to share how to get started with herbs. Just remember with herbs, there are some herbs you may be allergic to. If you're allergic to pollen or different grasses, some of these may not work for you. And always start with small doses and see how your body responds. But then you need to go into larger doses. And some of the companies that I'm recommending down below, they have the prescription on there for what would be good for you. But with any change that you make, please consult your, your healthcare practitioners to make sure this is okay for you to do. I am not a doctor to prescribe for you. I'm just sharing with you some of the foods that God has given us to bring healing to the body. And I can't wait to read your post about your next pregnancy and the healthy pregnancy that you have and the healthy baby that is born. So be sure and hit like and subscribe. And if you're new to us, welcome to the Biblical Nutritionist family. We have a whole library, a whole academy called Biblical Nutrition Academy, where you can get started learning about God's recipe for excellent health. And that includes how much he loves you. 
Thanks for watching.